Superman, Superman, wish I could fly like super. Oh, hello ladies and gentlemen, I'm the Omni Viewer here with another unscripted reaction, this time to Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. Now, uh, before I start, I may as well let you know up front that I am in the group of people who like Man of Steel. Um, the reason I bring that up, and I know it's not a popular opinion because it's really popular to hate that movie these days, but I have a whole different video in line for my thoughts on that. But the reason I bring it up is because the shortest possible review that I or anyone else can give of this movie is that if you didn't like Man of Steel, you will not like Dawn of Justice. It is not going to change your mind on the DC Cinematic Universe. So just know that up front. That might be all you need to hear. You might hear that and think, well, I hated Man of Steel, so there's a movie I won't be wasting my money on and be on your merry way. But for the rest of you who are either curious or did like Man of Steel, you're there, you are therefore wondering, does that mean Batman v Superman is good? Well, I will say that, hmm, it's a bit busier than Man of Steel. Like, Man of Steel, when all was said and done, still had a very linear, focused plot. Batman v Superman has a much more sprawling plot, uh, some of which I'm sure must have been cut and will likely appear in that director's cut we're going to be getting, which will somehow be R-rated. We'll see how that works. But, um, was it a good movie? I liked it, which, again, I realize I'm probably in the minority of. I don't think it's the best movie ever, but I did enjoy it. Um, let's see. Now, I, I had the same concerns a lot of people had. Like, the more and more I heard that characters were getting cast who were neither Batman nor Superman, that started to make me wonder, like, is this really just a Batman versus Superman, or are they actually going full Justice League this early? Because, you know, like, you read the news, they were casting Aquaman and The Flash, and maybe Cyborg was going to be in there, and Doomsday, Green Lantern maybe? Who knows? Um, and it seemed like it was going to be so incredibly busy, like, it would be too much for one movie. Now, it almost is. It just skirts the line of going over into complete train wreck, if you ask me at least. I certainly think that there are movies with less cohesive plots. Uh, we're lucky that it turned out as well as it did. This is all sounding kind of negative, isn't it? Um, considering I said I liked the movie. Well, okay, I guess I may as well be upfront. The plot is not its strongest part, and I don't know how much of that is because the stuff that will be in the director's cut was not in there, and how much of that is because it was just the movie trying to reach as far as it could and trying not to overextend itself. But, um, you know, there are, that, that's actually kind of appropriate for comic books when you get right down to it. There are many, many, many comic book plots that have overextended and been too busy for their own good. Quite a few of them from the 90s. But um, I, I don't think, I, I was never lost, I guess is the important thing. I could follow the plot. I understood what was going on at every particular time. And ultimately, I think that is enough to give it a passing grade, by which I mean like how a C plus is still technically average, I guess. It's not a B plus plot, it's certainly not an A plot, but it gets the job done. It gets the characters from A to B, there you go. Um, but a Weak or crazy plot can easily be saved by the performances. That's my experience at any rate. I've seen movies and shows with no plot at all that have relied entirely on performances. And of course, this has made some controversial casting choices. I mean, for the returning cast, uh, Henry Cavill and uh, Amy Adams, all those people, Lawrence Fishburne, they're, they carry over the same stuff from Man of Steel into this. So, 
Once again, if you didn't like how they were in Man of Steel, you won't like them here. If you did, you will. Um, but let's focus on the new people. Specifically, let's, uh, that would be Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman, Jesse Eisenberg as Les, Lex Luthor, and Ben Affleck as Batman. Now, the one thing that even the negative reviews have been saying was good was Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. And that's kind of surprising given how many people, some of them people giving those praises, absolutely hated that casting choice when it was first made. I mean, just go back and see. You'll find a lot of people who did not like that, but now everyone seems to think it was a good idea. And it was. She, she's not in the movie a whole lot, but she is a good Wonder Woman. And can I just say, for a moment, it's about freaking time Wonder Woman was in a theatrical movie. I mean, she's one of the first superheroes ever, one of the most iconic superheroes ever, male or female, and... I mean, she's there from the beginning, trendsetter, icon of so many different things, and we're not, we haven't gotten a movie until 2016. Well, movie appearance in 2016. The actual Wonder Woman movie is next year. I mean, we live in a world where Spawn and Ant-Man, freaking Spawn and freaking Ant-Man, got movies before Wonder Woman. Backwards nature of the film industry aside, uh, Gal Gadot was good as Wonder Woman. Like I said, she's not in it that much, but when she is in it, you know, she's good. She owns that role. I'm really looking forward to the solo movie now. And, um, I mean, regardless of anything else that happens, but I won't discuss spoilers here. Um, but, uh, yeah, she was good. Good casting choice. I was never really offended by it in the first place, but I liked her. I really did. I think she's going to be good in the role. Uh, Eisenberg as Luthor. Now that's the one that raised an eyebrow even for me. Because, you know, you, there, we all have this certain image of Lex Luthor as the stoic, strong-willed, very focused, very intense corporate man who opposes Superman. And then you cast Jesse Eisenberg, who is kind of small and nerdy looking, and more to the point, they were going for more of a Steve Jobs eccentric nerd kind of vibe, and that makes a lot of people go, what? Uh, really? Him? Um, and that was my first impression. I was thinking, really? That guy of all things? All the people you could have chose, you picked the lead from Zombieland? But, you know, then I thought, and I thought to other things like Now You See Me and stuff like that, and I thought, actually, he is pretty good at conveying intensity. He can, can, he can be a pretty menacing figure and mysterious and stuff if he wants to be, if he tries. So, who knows? Maybe it'll work. And this is definitely not the Lex Luthor everyone is used to. Um, I've heard some people say that it feels more like Luthor and the Joker were mashed together, which, I don't know, pre-production might have been. But um, I will say this. The Luthor I think everyone wanted to see is actually a more recent version of the character. Earlier versions of him, he was a mad scientist. And I think they were kind of going more in that direction. Uh, this Luthor, you can tell he's really smart, because not just because he's so successfully playing every side he can, but also it's a subtle thing in the way he speaks. Uh, when he speaks, it sounds like he's just rambling and insane and stuff, but to someone like me, I actually recognized it. You know how I tend to ramble in these unscripted things and maybe pause while I'm trying to figure out what I wanted to say? Uh, that's because my brain at pretty much all times is going in multiple directions at once. Some of it related to what I'm speaking about to you and some of it completely unrelated to anything at all. And 
my brain works faster than my mouth does. And that is what this Lex Luthor was. He, you can tell he is thinking about at least a hundred different things at any given time. And when he's meant to be speaking about them, he doesn't always stay completely focused. Uh, which, you know, that might sound like a bad thing, but trust me, it's a real thing people do, and I'm not sure a lot of people actually get that. So, now I've thrown it out there, I don't know if you agree, that's the impression I got. And moving on to Batfleck, a lot of people were upset by this idea as well. Not because Ben Affleck is a bad actor, quite the contrary, he's a great one, but more because people had already seen him in a superhero role, that being Daredevil, and a lot of people didn't like that movie. Now, again, Daredevil is a movie I like, but specifically I like the director's cut. The original one, the theatrical cut, yes, that's just a generic, ironically enough, actually, it's a copy almost exactly of the Tim Burton Batman. So, there you go, he was destined. Um, but the director's cut made a lot of improvements. Watch that. Tr take my word for it. If you haven't, check it out. It might change your opinion. It's like 30 extra minutes. Um, but anyway, um, so a lot of people were probably already filled with dread because they didn't like Daredevil, so they figured he wouldn't do well as Batman either. Um, don't worry. He is good as Batman. But again, this is a very different version of Batman than what you're probably expecting. It is very heavily influenced by the Frank Miller version from The Dark Knight Returns. Uh, not the all-star Batman and Robin, don't worry, but definitely it's a Batman Re Dark Knight Returns kind of vibe. And uh, not just in the costume, but in how he goes about stuff. And there are actually a lot of moments and a lot of lines that are lifted straight from that comic. Um, but also, the thing you got to realize about this version of Batman is that he is crazy. He is a nutty one, this Batman. Uh, I saw it with my dad, this movie, and he has... Batman has multiple dream sequences throughout this film, and after the first one, well, first or second one, uh, I turned to him and I went, Batman's crazy. <laughs> and... It's true. This one comes across as especially disturbed and paranoid. Uh, which, you know, Batman is paranoid. And if you're gonna give him a legitimate reason to go up against someone who is clearly a good guy like Superman, he's gotta have some serious trust issues. Um, also, this one appears to have no problem with killing either. Like, there are definite moments where Batman does kill people. Then again, Original version of Batman killed people, too. Like, very first Bob Kane comics, Batman hanged a guy from the Batplane. <laughs> so, if you're gonna say Batman doesn't kill, the real Batman doesn't kill, you better specify which one the real Batman is. But that's a different video I've already done. But not about Batman, anyway. Um, so, but... All in all, I think this was the best way they could have done it, or at least I think it was a good way to do it, maybe not the best, but it was a good way to do it because Batman ultimately is meant to be in the wrong in this movie. Uh, he is not supposed to be right in opposing Superman, and you're just going to have to deal with that if you're a Batman fan because, you know, he shouldn't be opposing the guy who is using all of his amazing power for good. He is... <sighs> I don't know if I should really get into my full thoughts on the whole greater scope of the Batman versus Superman debate. Uh, I'll, I'll keep it related to the movie for this video. Yeah, um, Batman's nuts in this movie. Uh, he's very heavily influenced by The Dark Knight Returns. If you like The Dark Knight Returns, you'll probably... Th even if you dislike the movie, you'll probably be thinking, oh, that's really cool to finally see it like that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I thought it was interesting, and uh, in case you're wondering, no spoilers, like I said, but there are scenes that set up the rest of the Justice League, or at least a couple other ones, and the cynical among you might say that it's just like 
that, that it's needless padding and sequel baiting that should have been relegated to a stinger, to a post-credit stinger. I personally thought it was really intriguing. Maybe it's just because this is the first time a lot of these characters are, have been on the screen at all, and it, my mind was just going, oh, that is really cool to finally see these guys like that. Um, but, you know, it didn't disrupt the movie for me. I was intrigued. Um, and that, that ultimately is a good thing. I mean, you want to get me intrigued for a sequel? Mission accomplished. I'm intrigued about the sequels. Um, for other reasons too, but like I keep saying, no spoilers in this one. Um, so, other stuff was pretty good. I mean, the special effects, pretty standard for a DC or any superhero blockbuster. Uh, the action, ridiculously huge, um, even for the, even considering the previous film, actually, wait, before I forget, um, remember how a lot of people were really upset at how Man of Steel had a very high body count during the Battle of Metropolis? They actually add a couple lines throughout the film, during the action finale specifically, where they say that area of the city has been evacuated. Like, I, I noticed that. Um, they specifically say there's no one there, so no one dies. Um, I gotta think that was deliberate. So, there you go. Can't complain about it now, can ya? Um, but anyway, like I said, that, that's pretty, that is pretty much what I think. It's a good movie. I don't know if I like it more than Man of Steel, but I do like it. The plot is kind of hectic, but didn't necessarily lose me at any point. The performances are good. Um, before I forget, Jeremy Irons, great as Alfred. I'd like to see more of him in that role in the future, because he was really good. Uh, special effects were good. Costumes look good. Music, some people would say it's over the top. I kind of thought it was cool. I like those really... Um, fierce Wagnerian arias that churn the blood like that. It's, I, I, I don't know why. That's just what I like. I like power metal too. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, overall, good movie. Maybe not great. Um, we will see what happens in the other movie where all the superheroes decide to fight each other instead of the bad guys that's coming out later. Um, but, you know... I definitely think it was good, but there are other things I need to discuss, but I'm trying to keep this video spoiler free, so in the next video, there will be something I have to talk about, because I cannot keep my thoughts on this to myself until everyone else has seen it. So until such time as we meet again, I'm Clark Kent.